People won't be shy uh, because uh, the whole point of this is for me to hear directly from you and answer your questions, uh, hear about your concerns, hear about your hopes, and hopefully uh, that will translate itself into some of the things that we're doing at the White House. I, I obviously want to make some introductions uh, that uh, uh, you know, I think uh, all of you know that you've got some members of Congress who are working very hard here in Northern Virginia, and, and I want to acknowledge them. Uh, first of all, uh, Congressman Jim Moran has been doing great work for a very long time. So, uh, Congressman Jerry Connolly has been doing terrific work here locally and now uh, on Capitol Hill. We've got Sharon uh, Bolova, who is the chairwoman of the Fairfax County Board of Commissioners. And we've also got a couple of small business owners, because one of the things I want to talk about is how we can grow the economy and get people back, uh, back to work. And so who better to hear from than a couple of small business owners? Don't worry, I'm not going to call on you, but I'm just glad you're here. Uh, and then, first of all, we've got uh, Cheryl Hurt, who's the owner of As We Grow Learning Center. Hey, Cheryl, thanks for being here. And Larry Poltasev, did I say that right, Larry? Uh, who is the CEO of Target Labs, Inc. And so we're glad that you guys could join us. Now, uh, I'm only going to say a few things at the top. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about why I decided to run for president in the first place back in 2007-2008. Uh, uh, having served as a state senator, having then served as a United States senator, I had had a chance to see how economic policies were having an effect on working class families and middle class families for a long time. Uh, and my wife and I, uh, we came out of hard-working families who didn't have a lot, but because the economy was growing, because there was an emphasis on uh, what was good for the middle class, we were able to get a great education, we were able to get scholarships. Uh, Michelle's dad worked as a blue-collar worker, but just on that one salary he was able to provide for his family and uh, make sure that they always uh, had enough and, and the kids had opportunities. And, what it seemed like was for about a decade there, middle class families were losing more and more ground. Uh, and some of that had to do with changes in the global economy and greater competition from around the world. But a lot of it had to do with the policies that had been put in place, which really boiled down to cutting taxes, especially for millionaires and billionaires, cutting regulations uh, that made consumers and workers more vulnerable, um, failing to make investments that were so critical in growing our middle class over the long term. And so when I ran for president, my goal was to make sure that we get a set of economic policies in place that would lay the foundation for long-term growth in the 21st century so that the 21st century would be an American century just like the 20th century had been. And that's what we've tried to do over the last 19 months in the midst of the worst financial crisis that we've seen since the Great Depression. Uh, the first thing we had to do was just stop the bleeding, stabilize the financial system and make sure we didn't trip into a Great Depression, and we have done that. So when I was sworn in on that very cold day in January, some of you may remember, uh, we, we lost 750,000 jobs in that month alone. Now we've seen eight consecutive months of private sector job growth because of the policies we put in place. We were on the verge of financial meltdown. Anybody who was involved in business at that time remembers banks were not lending at all. You couldn't even get an auto loan uh, or a consumer loan. And now the financial systems have stabilized, although they're not completely where we need them to be. The economy was shrinking uh, at a pace of uh, uh, an astounding pace of about 6% uh, annually, and now the economy has been growing. So we stopped the bleeding, stabilized the economy, but the fact of the matter is, is that the pace of improvement has not been where it needs to be. And the hole that we had dug ourselves in was enormous. I mean, we lost four million jobs in the last six months of 2008, when I was still running. We lost four million jobs. And all told, we've lost eight million jobs. And so even though we've grown jobs this year, 
we haven't been able to yet make up for those 8 million jobs that have been lost. And, and that's an enormous challenge. Now, the second part of the challenge, though, is to make sure that even as we're digging ourselves out of this hole, we start making some better decisions so that long term we don't find ourselves in this circumstance again and we start creating the kind of economy that's working for middle class families. So a couple of things that we did on that front. We cut taxes for middle class families uh, because we understand that people's incomes and wages have not gone up, have not kept pace with increases in health care, increases in college, and so forth. The second thing that we felt was very important was to start creating some rules of the road again. So in financial services, for example, we passed a financial regulatory bill that makes sure that we're not going to have taxpayer bailouts, make sure that banks have to operate a little bit more responsibly and take less risks with the money that they're investing. And we also made sure that consumers are treated more fairly because part of what happened in this financial crisis was people were getting mortgages that they didn't understand. Suddenly the bottom fell out of the housing market and banks found themselves in a crisis situation. So what we've said is, let's make sure that consumers know exactly the kinds of mortgages they're, they're getting. Let's make sure that they can't be steered into these balloon-type payments where th there's no chance that over the long term they're going to be able to make their payments. Uh, let's make sure that credit card companies have to notify you if they're going to increase your interest rates. And let's make sure that they can't increase your interest rates on your existing balances, only on future balances, so that they're not tricking you into suddenly paying exorbitant fees and putting you in a hole over the long term. Yes. So the, uh, Jerry likes that one. <laughs> so so we, we, we set up uh, a bunch of rules both in the financial services area, in the housing sector, and in health care. Uh, and I know that a lot of people here heard a lot about uh, the health care bill. One of the most important things that that was about was making sure that insurance companies treated you fairly. So if you've got health insurance, companies are not going to be able to drop you from coverage when you get sick, which is part of what had been happening. They couldn't deny you insurance because of a pre-existing condition or if your child had a pre-existing condition, which obviously makes families enormously vulnerable. So a set of rules of the road for how uh, companies interact with consumers, how they interact with workers. And then the final thing that we've tried to do to lay this foundation for long-term economic growth is to put our, our, our investments in those things that are really going to make us more competitive over the long term. So we have made the largest investment in research and development, in basic research and science, in our history. Because that's going to determine whether we can compete with China and India and Germany over the long term. Are we inventing stuff here? that we can then export overseas. We're making investments in our infrastructure because we can't have a second class infrastructure and expect to have a first class economy. Just a, an interesting statistic over the last uh, decade, China spends about 9% of its gross domestic product on infrastructure. Europe spends about 5%. We've been spending 2%. And that's part of the reason why we no longer have the best airports, we no longer have the best rail systems, we don't have the best broadband service. South Korea has better broadband service and wireless service than we do. And over time that adds up, it makes us less competitive. So what we've said is we've got to make investments in infrastructure. A third area, education. A generation ago, we had the highest proportion of college graduates of any country in the world. 